As a finance professional in a disrupted business landscape, what does it take to be in demand? What does it take to attract great paying international roles? If you're an ICANN member, it'll just take one exam. That's all it takes to complete the globally recognized SEMA professional qualification and the internationally in respected CGMA designation. As a SEMA member and a CGMA designation holder, employers will look at you as a finance professional, constantly acquiring new skills to add value to the business. That's why they'll be willing to pay premium to hire and retain you. If you have five years of relevant experience and are an ICANN member, you can directly sit for the final exam of the SEMA professional qualification, the strategic case study exam. Start studying the SEMA professional qualification. Prepare to make an impact. Professional colleagues, our friends of the institutes, today, 23rd November 2023, it's another episode of I Can On Hair. And today we have the topic Transformation Agenda of the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria. Of course, you will agree that I Can On Hair is a great platform for learning, powered by our noble institute, the Institute of General Accountant of Nigeria. I'm your host for today, Tosin Yakimomi. Please inform your colleagues and friends that the show has commenced and that it can be part of this show, Icon on Air, on Icon social media handles, including Facebook page, Instagram handle, and Icon YouTube channel. And like I said again, we have in the house today a public servant, a distinguished professional, the executive secretary and CEO of Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria in person of Dr. Rabiu Olowo, who shall be providing insight on the topic for today. So sit back and relax as we shall be discussing the topic for today. I'll be right back. Don't go away. As a finance professional in a disrupted business landscape, what does it take to be in demand? What does it take to attract great paying international roles? If you're an ICANN member, it'll just take one exam. That's all it takes to complete the globally recognized SEMA professional qualification and the internationally in respected CGMA designation. As a SEMA member and a CGMA designation holder, employers will look at you as a finance professional, constantly acquiring new skills to add value to the business. That's why they'll be willing to pay premium to hire and retain you. If you have five years of relevant experience and are an ICANN member, you can directly sit for the final exam of the SEMA professional qualification, the strategic case study exam. Start studying the SEMA professional qualification. Prepare to make an impact. You are welcome back to the studio, and I have my guest in the house for today, in person of Dr. Rabi Olowo, the Executive Secretary and CEO of FRC Nigeria. Doctor, you are welcome, sir. You are muted, sir. You are muted, sir. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Tosin Akimumi. It's a great pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you very much. It is our pleasure to have you on Icon on Air today. Let me quickly take the abrupt profile of our guest on the show today, Dr. Rabi Olowo, ACA. He is a highly accomplished corporate reporting and public finance leader with a proven track record in developing and implementing corporate governance practices in both private and public institutions. As a professor of practice in forensic auditing, finance, and public policy, his expertise and experience will significantly contribute to the FRC's mission of promoting transparency accountability and excellence in financial reporting. With a distinguished academic background and a wealth of professional qualifications, Dr. Lowell brings a breadth of knowledge to his new role 
He holds an MBO, MBA from the University of Lagos, an MSc in Accounting and Finance from Robert Gordon University in Aberdeen, UK, and a PhD in Forensic Accounting and Auditing. Moreover, he is a Chartered Accountant, Chartered Management Accountant, Certified Internal Controls Auditor, and a Certified for Examiner, among what I esteemed certifications. Dr. Olowo's previous role as the Honorable Commissioner for Finance in Lagos State between 2019 and 2023 showcased his exceptional leadership capabilities in managing the fiscal policies of one of the Africa's largest economies. His accomplishments in revenue management, expenditure management, investment management, debt management, financial reporting, and governance were instrumental in elevating Lagos State financial standing to the prestigious AAA rating by Fitch and international ratings agencies. Dear professional colleagues and viewers at large, and that is their brief profile of our guest on the show today, and I'm sure uh, is, uh, is a very famous person, and I'm sure you all know uh, Dr. Rabi Olowo. Once again, Doctor, we say you are welcome to ICANN on Hair. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, and and we'll start, I'll start by congratulating you on your recent appointment by His Excellency President Bola Ahmed you know, with GCFR as Executive Secretary and CEO of FRCN. Congratulations, Doctor. Thank you very much. Thank you for your kind words. Yeah. Okay, so uh, given your background as a World Bread Accounting Professional, as the Executive Secretary and CEO of FRCN, uh, would you like to share what your vision is for FRC being the APS regulatory body on financial reporting and corporate governance in Nigeria? Let, let's start with that, sir. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Tosi, and uh, the entire ICANN team for this opportunity. Uh, the new FRCN, you know, eGarden looks for the opportunity to interact with uh, stakeholder groups, you know, members of the profession. So this is an excellent platform for me to share the transformation agenda of the FRC. Uh, like you said, our transformation agenda is very simple. Uh, we want to be that new, robust, uh, agile, vibrant, independent regulator of our profession. Uh, for those who contribute into the financial reporting process and also the entire, uh, you know, corporate governance uh, framework in Nigeria, we're looking at this from an investor focused perspective. Uh, so that's exactly how we want to be positioned uh, going forward. And we see a huge, uh, you know, improvement opportunity in meeting this uh, mandate of ours. Okay, that's a good one, seeing it from the investment perspective. Okay, moving on. Uh, in today's world of volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity, which is known as VUCA, compliance with standards and regulations guarantees the safety and growth of entities, whether individual or corporate, private or public. Having you on the show today as our guest, we enable our global viewers, especially the professionals, to learn and share from your wealth of experience. Uh, what would you say? Okay, let, let me also use your experience as uh, the Commissioner of Finance in Lagos, of course, being the youngest uh, Commissioner of Finance in the country as of them between 2019 and 2023. It is on record that some of your service accomplishments were instrumental in elevating Lagos state financial standard to stand into the prestigious AAA written by Fitch. An international ratings agency. So, what should Nigerians expect from you as the new executive secretary or CEO of the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria? So, thank you very much. I think that's a very, you know, uh, excellent question. Uh, you know, I see my experiences, you know, as very unique. Uh, you know, the roles I've had in my experience in corporate life. You know, it means that I bring to be a real life experience. Uh, to the field that I understand very well. Uh, from my days in Zenith Bank as an accountant, as an auditor, uh, you know, to the industry, manufacturing, working across industry, uh, you know, subsectors. Um, you know, I've been privileged to hold a number of uh, senior leadership positions in business. And this role, uh, uh, you, you know, very differently and, uh, you know, entirely focused on serving the purpose to which is the mandate of accountants. Uh, you know, those times when I was an accountant as an auditor compliance profession. But the role today as uh, the executive secretary 
and CEO of the Financial Reporting Council. It's different. It's different in the sense that, uh, you, you know, it helps me to bring to bear all these experiences across private and public, you know, institution using the discipline that uh, was employed during my role as Honorable Commissioner for Finance, succeeding in a very, very complex environment to be here. Uh, I'm bringing this to serve public interest by leading an organization that critically champions what the profession does in accounting, in auditing, holding to account those who are responsible for implementing standards and codes. So I feel really, really privileged to be leading and championing this uh, particular organization that does this in the interest of the public. Uh, so what I think, um, uh, you know, our colleagues and the generality of the people should watch out for in terms of what we are bringing to bear. Uh, they, I mean, I'll summarize it in three forms. The first one is that we're going to be very, very firm on enforcement. Uh, there is no reason why we're going to have one of the best standards and codes in the world and we are not able to implement it. We are going to be very, very, very firm on enforcement, enforcement of all standards, of all codes issued by the FRC. We're going to be very firm, for lack of better word, I mean, I'm trying not to use the word tough, but we are going to be very, very firm on enforcement, making sure that we hold to account those who are responsible for delivering standards and codes. The second thing is that we've seen a huge opportunity uh, 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 for improvement, you know, even, you know, especially in our corporate governance uh, codes. Uh, today we have our code, code of corporate governance for the private institution, but we are yet to have a code of corporate governance for public institutions. These are the institutions that underpin the society. So we're going to make sure that in the next six months, we issue a code uh, of corporate governance for public institutions and also the not-for-profit sectors. These are also very critical uh, you know, sectors. And if you like, if you do a risk analysis, they are also risky uh, 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 sectors. We're also going to make sure that we issue new codes covering the not-for-profit sectors and also the public institution. I think the third thing, you know, as part of our transformational agenda in terms of what we hope to do in the short to medium term is to see how we can leverage technology, uh, digital transformation of our organization, making it easier for people to interact with us, maybe in the way they submit their financials, the way we analyze those financials, the way we review the financial statement, employing new tools like the SBRL for financial statement in line with our uh, section eight of the 2023 amendment, which gives us the mandate to maintain a national repository for all financial statements. So this gives us an opportunity to employ technology to achieving our aim. Okay, that's beautiful. Uh, and I also believe that the issuance of uh, codes for public entities, for public organizations and sectors will actually be a great achievement uh, for your team, as you have actually mentioned. And that takes me to the next question that uh, as a regulator, uh, global viewers would like to be enlightened on uh, who are those that constitute the users of financial reports? And what exactly are the qualities that a good financial report should have? So, uh, th thank you very much. So, like we uh, all know, uh, you know, the users of financial reports vary from shareholders to management to creditors to debtors to investors to government. I'm going to speak from the government perspective, drawing from the compelling uh, need of government and also regulators. Uh, like I said earlier, we're going to be looking at this from an investor protection perspective. Uh, that's what we, you know, that's the lenses to which we look at financial statements and try to make sure that they are credible enough. We're looking at this from an investor uh, you know, protection perspective. We are looking at this, for, you know, to enforce fair competition between businesses uh, so that there can be trust uh, uh, from uh, international investors, you know, to bring in foreign direct investment, foreign portfolio investment, so that we can attract this capital into our country. If our financial reports are not credible enough, it means that there will be no uh, fair, uh, you know, playing ground for businesses you know, to compete fairly. So we believe that uh, these are the, uh, uh, you know, critical things that actually helps us to achieve our goal of economic growth. 
So for us as a regulator, that's the lenses that we're going to be looking at it from all other uh, stakeholder groups like shareholders, uh, management, debtors, creditors. They have varying and different uh, uh, needs for financial statement. But one thing stands out in terms of what everyone is looking for is about credibility. Uh, your financial statement has to be fair uh, to the core. Okay, financial statement being fair to the core, and that's exactly what it should be. Uh, thank you very much for your response on that question, uh, my doctor. Okay, so my next question will be that uh, our global viewers will want to know what are the yields of bad financial reports or a poor financial report, as I may also put it on the other side, and what are the kinds of punishment or punitive measures or reprimand to expect from your office as a regulator on such poor financial reports? Yeah, uh, Tosin, I think, uh, you, you know, this gives me an opportunity to uh, express uh, our current viewpoint in terms of how we handle these types of things, you know, going forward. Our act is very, very robust. Our, you know, Establishment Act is very, very robust, you know, in terms of uh, 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 citing various uh, provisions, you know, plethora of provisions of different levels of breaches. Uh, and, uh, you know, this ranges from even suspension of, uh, you know, professional members, professional accountants who are involved in financial reporting process, fines on organization, fines on professionals, um penalties that include even imprisonment if you look at the uh, uh some provisions that have been included in the amendment for 2023 it gives us uh, uh some some taste of law enforcement that that gives us the ability to to drive our enforcement um you know activities even up to imprisonment so these are in fact it also includes warrant of distraint on organizational premises and activities so these are all the plethora of provisions that is included in our act in order to uh, play our role as an independent regulator of the financial reporting activities. And all these want our viewers and members or all stakeholders in the financial reporting and corporate governance process to familiarize themselves with because we will hold to account all those that are responsible for delivering these standards that fail to do so. Okay, thank you very much for that response. Uh, viewers, if you are just joining us, uh, this is your program, Icon on Air, and today we are looking at the topic, Transformation Agenda of the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria. And speaking on that topic is no other person other than the Executive Secretary and CEO of FRCN in person of Dr. Rabiu Olowo. So send in your questions and certainly is on seat to take uh, those questions. Uh, doctor, moving on on the questions. So before now, financial reporting was the principal focus of corporate bodies and even governments. But today, the, the attention has shifted to sustainability reporting. So you hear sustainability reporting everywhere you go. So in simple terms, can, can you tell us what is sustainability reporting and what exactly is the difference between financial reporting and sustainability reporting? Okay, so that, that's a very, very, you know, interesting question. And it speaks to, uh, you know, the current, um, um, you know, information and context to which, uh, you know, reporting is done today from an integrated reporting standpoint. But let me start by, uh, uh, you, know, uh, you know, preparing the background about sustainable, you know, development. That's where sustainability reporting actually comes from. It was defined way back in 1987. Uh, in the World Commission on Environment and Development uh, as a report that has the ability to meet their own need. The concept of sustainability reporting is based on the definition that companies should disclose all their environment, social, and governance objectives, and also communicate the efforts that they are making in addition to you know, progressing in this particular trajectory in order to achieve the overall objectives of the organization. So on the back of that, Sustainability reporting drives significantly from financial reporting, just like you said, in the sense that sustainability reporting does not have a format, <laughs> uh, you know, of reporting yet, as we have for financial reporting that, oh, your statement of financial position has to be this, but it's put into context, the spirit 
of how businesses are evolving around uh, the environment. So sustainability reporting is not yet um, mandatory. We have uh, uh, some early adopters this year, uh, but from 2024 in Nigeria, uh, uh, FRCN will be able to uh, provide oversight. And we're currently providing advocacy and guidance to all levels of businesses on how they can report their sustainable uh, 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 account. Sorry, can you hear me? Okay, okay, I think I can hear you now. The next one, the network glitch. I can hear you now. Uh, my ears. Can you hear me, please? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, so I think uh, we have a network glitch over there. So let me quickly uh, recognize our viewers at home, those who have joined us on this program. So we have a uh, real one, a DDG from Erua or your state. Uh, we have VX Live. Uh, we have Fagbolati Mitope Adeniyi. Fagbolati Mitope Adeniyi, a regular participant on this program. You are welcome. Uh, we also have uh, BC Fajomo Uluda Mola Olatumbo, all the way from Lagos. We have uh, Ali Bomo in Masaya from Abuja. We have Muda Shiru Badamosi joining us from Washington State. We have Christopher Chukuma Anago uh, all the way from uh, joining us from the south of the nation. Okay, that's a good one. Uh, we also have uh, John Howa. John Owa, you're welcome to Icon on Air. Uh, also on the show today, we have uh, Titi Layo Bajomo. Titi Layo Bajomo, you're welcome to Icon on Air. So as others join this program, certainly we we'll also recognize you. Uh, so my ears, you welcome back. I think we have a network glitch over yeah. there. Yeah, you thank welcome, you. You welcome. you welcome back. Thank you, sir. Thank okay, so moving on on our questions. Uh, as a seasoned professional accountant uh, that you are, uh, does environmental, social, and governance, ESG, really affect financial performance? If yes, how do they affect financial performance. Can you take us through, sir? Yeah, absolutely. I think the answer is a very big yes. ESD affects financial performance of every organization as it involves corporate behavioral change. How do companies interact with the society? What kind of, you know, what amount of emission, you know, comes out as a result of their, you know, activities. It helps a proper and holistic management of an entity for the good of all the stakeholders. Therefore, it also trades off the short term but enhances organizational performance at the long run. let me give you a real life uh, context to how these affect uh, organizational performance if you look at the um new uh guidance as given by the president of the country on cng uh you know encouraging uh, uh, you know, machineries, cars, you know, to convert to CNG, we'll see that there are transition costs associated with this. But the conversion to CNG fueled vehicles will require initial outflow of resources like we have all, uh, you know, been experiencing. But in the long run, it creates resilient organizations and make the environment more friendly, more friendly for humans, more friendly for businesses. And also at the end of the day, the society at large that uh, accommodates us all. So this will save cost in the medium to long term. So and this is how uh, uh, you know you can you know understand the context of how this relates uh, 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 to have you know having effect on organizational performance, especially in the medium to the long term. Okay, that's a great one, and that, that, that's well taken. And I'm sure our viewers at home are following the responses of the executive secretary of FRCN. Okay, so uh, moving on, we uh, the next question I'll be taking now. And it talks about the mission which you earlier shared, but now I only want you to uh, to further clarify. So I, I was saying, as, as an accomplished corporate reporting and public finance leader that you are, and of course a professor of practice in forensic accounting, finance and public policy, how would you intend to contribute to FRC's mission of promoting transparency, 
accountability and excellence in financial reporting. Yeah, so thank you very much again. You know, as I've stated earlier, as part of our three cardinal objectives of what our transformation agenda is going to be, you know, lever on, enforcement is key. Using my experience as an auditor of many years, compliance professional, uh, you know, developing standards, you, you know, and codes for uh, multiple, I think the first step is, enfor in, you know, is enforcing compliance. We have seen worrying evidence of huge nature of non-compliance from professionals to firms to companies uh, uh you know to everyone across the value chain and this is really really disturbing so uh, for us at the frcn enforcing compliance following you know by deeper and a more robust collaboration this is one of such collaboration we are not out there you know trying to uh, throw the whip we also want to advocate we also want to educate we also want to interact you know and tell people about the things that they should watch out for and which you know i think that this program is a veritable tool you know in terms of uh, achieving that i will also partake in training and retraining through our technical workshops you know, ensuring that people know what not to miss uh there will be review of our existing laws in line with international standards from time to time uh, more importantly frlc we demonstrate leadership by giving account of itself, you know, in terms of the council's uh, stewardship. And uh, at the end of the day, we will hold to account those who are responsible for delivering standards and codes. Uh, we'll make sure that we are firm on this and compliance is key in doing this. Okay, holding to account those that are expected to do what is expected of them. And that's a good one, of course. We also expect uh, that is done. Uh, but uh, on a on a different thought, uh, uh, doctor, you know when you are talking about your experience in Zenith Bank and uh, your experience in terms of the compliance audit and all of that, I'm so certain that many people may actually not know that you have those foundations uh, because uh, maybe many just got to know you when you became uh, the honorable commissioner uh, of finance in Lagos. But certainly that speaks to the fact that uh, you have actually been coming all the way uh this long to have learned uh through all those uh uh, uh necessary uh, foundations which have come together to make you a professor that you are actually today uh, and it's a pleasure to actually have you on the show speaking on the topic transformation agenda of the financial reporting council of nigeria uh, my guest on the show uh let's quickly go and take a break and like we usually say uh, I can on air, it's an avenue that you can actually bring your wares and we can actually showcase your wares on I can on air. It's affordable. The rate is affordable. So uh, speak with us and let us showcase your wares to the world. Let's quickly go on a short commercial. We'll be right back after this break. Don't go away. As a finance professional in a disrupted business landscape, what does it take to be in demand? What does it take to attract great paying international roles? If you're an ICANN member, it'll just take one exam. That's all it takes to complete the globally recognized SEMA professional qualification and the internationally in respected CGMA designation. As a SEMA member and a CGMA designation holder, employers will look at you as a finance professional, constantly acquiring new skills to add value to the business. That's why they'll be willing to pay premium to hire and retain you. If you have five years of relevant experience and are an ICANN member, you can directly sit for the final exam of the SEMA Professional Qualification, the Strategic Case Study Exam. Start studying the SEMA Professional Qualification. Prepare to make an impact. Security is key to national development and growth. No nation can be truly economically successful without peace and stability or when its security is threatened. This is why we must perform our civic obligation of duly paying our taxes so as to provide the needed resources for government to secure our lives and properties. When we pay our taxes, government is provided with the needed resources to equip our security agencies for a safer Nigeria. The money we pay as taxes is used to purchase equipment and hardware, invest in intelligence and other sophisticated technology, as well as cater for the welfare of all security personnel. 
A secure nation is a prosperous nation. Nigeria is safer when we pay our taxes. FIRS, it pays to pay your tax. As a finance professional in a disrupted business landscape, what does it take to be in demand? What does it take to attract great paying international roles? If you're an ICANN member, it'll just take one exam. That's all it takes to complete the globally recognized SEMA professional qualification and the internationally in-respected CGMA designation. As a SEMA member and a CGMA designation holder, employers will look at you as a finance professional, constantly acquiring new skills to add value to the business. That's why they'll be willing to pay premium to hire and retain you. If you have five years of relevant experience and are an ICANN member, you can directly sit for the final exam of the SEMA Professional Qualification, the Strategic Case Study Exam. Start studying the SEMA Professional Qualification. Prepare to make an impact. from break and uh that's the show i can on air and we are speaking today on the transformation agenda of the financial reporting council of nigeria and of course our guest on the show today is the executive secretary and ceo of the financial reporting council of nigeria in person of dr rabi olo aca uh doctor you welcome yes. once again it's been a long time uh uh over the, uh, on the show today but of course our guests uh our, our audience have been sending in their questions and shortly we'll go to take some of those questions on the show uh moving on as the executive secretary and ceo of frcn please give us your fair and unbiased assessment of the nigerian economic policies especially in areas that relates to access to capital by individual investors SMEs and corporate organizations. Yeah, I think that's uh, that's a tough question um, because as a regulator, and uh, but this is my fair and uh, unbiased assessment. I think uh, there is uh, an improvement opportunity within the policy landscape, uh, and uh, as we can see, we're beginning to see some um, new. Uh, policy initiatives, changes coming out from this government, which is still early days. For example, on the fiscal policy side, uh, you see the presidential you know, committee on the review of um, fiscal policy headed by our friend Taiwo Idele. And you can see how that transcends from tax issues to uh, you know, enabling business issues and all of that. So for me, my uh, you know, assessment would be that... Uh, is going to be a very uh, good period for small businesses, for medium-sized businesses, and also for large businesses. Because if we succeed in taking care of our fiscal policy side in terms of how these businesses interact with government uh, on taxes, on levies, on fees, etc., and uh, also with the renewed commitment of the FRC as a regulator of the financial reporting and corporate. Uh, 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 governance. So, I, I, I mean, I see, uh, you know, a very good time uh, for businesses and all stakeholders in the, I mean, in the foreseeable future. Okay. Okay. That, that's a good one there. That's a good one there. Okay. Uh, the next question says, uh, professional accountants are amongst those heading the accounts and finance department in almost all the public and private sectors of Nigeria. Yet, we see public and private organizations collapse. How can FRCN come to the rescue here? <laughs> I'm happy that we're talking to professional accountants this evening. Exactly. And uh, you are absolutely correct. Uh, you know, your statement is very hard. Uh, um, um, I used to say that um, every decision is a financial decision. Uh, and uh, people also, you know, used to quote me saying that without business, you know, without accountants, there is no 
uh, 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 issue of collapse or issue of non-compliance that can happen in any business because we are the gatekeepers. So and uh, so, thank you for giving me the opportunity, you know, to speak to this audience uh, 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 this evening. If we accountants do the right thing, if we hold the goalposts very very tightly, our businesses will be protected and will become sustainable into the future. So what we are going to do as a regulator is that we already have very sound accounting uh, standards. Today, uh, we we practice the IFRS for businesses and also the IPSAS for uh, public institutions. And now we have, you know, flair of sustainability reporting coming in and become mandatory for 20. We will hold to account the standards that we have set for our businesses and the professionals who play major role in uh, you know, delivering these standards and codes. Uh, our members are the ones that are the uh, bedrock of uh, these activities across the and we'll make sure that we we'll continue with, uh, you know, consistent engagement such as this one, advocacy, uh, guidance, uh, uh, training, if you like, and also, uh, 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 you know, many, uh, you know, opportunities for interaction so that we can speak to ourselves about the values uh, you know, in delivering the trust that our profession uh, really needs. We'll make sure that we instill, uh, you know, corporate governance and also ensure that at the end of the day, we hold businesses accountable for the things that they do or the things that, they, you, you know, they are required to do but but are not doing. So that's the only way that we, uh, you know, will come to the rescue. Uh, uh, I mean, it's true advocacy, it's true enforcement, and it's also true engagement. So we'll continue to do this uh, you know, across these three levels. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, coming to the rescue through advocacy, through engagement, of course, and of course that those are uh, pillars that uh, uh, can also rescue people or entities that should do what is expected of them. So let's quickly go to the audience and take a few questions. Fagbalate Mitokwe Adeni. How can we use financial reporting techniques to tame emergence of financial crime across board? How can we use financial reporting techniques to tame emergence of financial crime across board? Over to you. Okay, you want me to? Okay. So, uh, so there are so many ways. You know, um, financial accounting today you know, goes through, you know, certain principles that preparers know. Also, reviewers and regulators, you know, ourselves, we also know how to employ a, a, a detailed analysis in understanding where standards have not been met, in understanding where principles have not been met, especially if you introduce some forensic, uh, you know, taste to your analysis. Like I said from the beginning, digital transformation and the employment of technology in our analysis and review of financial statement is going to be a key focus for us as a regulator. And I'm sure for every businesses or professionals as well, technology is playing more and more role today, you know, in terms of how we can even prepare, how we can analyze, how we can, uh, 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 you, you know, do a lot of analytics on our financials, run ratios, know when things are not uh, uh, coming up correctly. So I think employment of uh, digital tools and technology is a very, very important way in terms of uh, unveiling some of these uh, misstatements, errors, and if you like, uh, uh, f financial crimes. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. And the second part of our uh, Fagbo last uh, question is, is takes transformational leadership to drive transformational agenda. How prepared are the new management of FRC and I, I understand to drive this new agenda, sir. Thank you very much. I'm a very lucky person, you know, coming in with so much energy, coming in with a vision for change. I met with a team that are ready, they are aligned, they are energized for a new, a robust, uh, you know, a new vibrant FRCA. So, uh, so the team are ready, uh, they are on course, they are aligned, they are ready to do that that is expected from an independent regulator of our, our, our size. Uh, so the only thing we need is to uh, up our capacity, 
uh, uh, but in terms of mindset, our people are there and we are ready to do our job going forward. Okay, okay, beautiful. Uh, Michael Kane, the Oladega, I think uh, uh, he is trying to put his thoughts on the line. Let me share that thought with uh, Dr. Abby. He said, I would like to see the FRC establish threshold of minimum financial disclosure requirements for different turnover bars of uh, below 25 million per annum, between 25 million and 100 million naira and above 100 million naira, just as it's being done, of course, uh, in a, a, a finance act as well. So, so do, do, you, do you share this thought, sir? Yes. So, just closely, closely related to that, if you check our act, there is a definition of public interest entities. So, that takes a whole lot into concern. The industry you play, the size of your business, uh, 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 how your business interacts, you know, with the society, all these things put together, not just on re Okay, I, I guess we have a glitch from our uh, guest. Okay, uh, while uh, Dr. Rabi will be coming back to the studio, uh, let me quickly go again to uh, appreciate those who have also joined us on this call today. Uh, Lilia Nombono from Abuja. I uh, can see Andrew Uyabime. Andrew Uyabime, Michael Ame. Michael Ame is also asking a question. Okay, when the guest is back on the show, uh, your question will be put will be put forward. Okay. Uh, okay, I can also see uh, Tunji Oladimeji all the way from Undo State. Tunji Oladimeji, you are welcome to the show. This is your show, her show, I Can On Air. Ido Wu or Tetsu B. The word Tetsu B is also asking a question, of course. If you have time, we will be able to take this question on the show today. Annie Bema, Martin Slaughter, welcome. Kingsley Sunday, Oye Kezie, you are cited. Uh, Oshi Naya Shakirat Adishewa, all the way from Abeokuta in the good state, you are cited. Jidera Man, Jidera Man from Oshun State, you welcome to this show, I Can On Air. Sadu Abdul Ganiu from Yewasa, Ode Yewa Yewasa to good state. John Ayuri, John Ayuri. Telling us that it's an excellent discussion so far. Johnson Ode from Lagos. I GDS, I can see you. Read one online at DDG. He's asking a question. Of course, if we have time, certainly we'll take your question. Fumilayo Adenero Maxwell from Lagos. Uh, Christopher Chukuma Anagu, you are cited. Of course, people are joining the show today, and it's been an exciting time with our guest on the show today and we are discussing transformation agenda of the financial reporting council of nigeria and our guest on the show today has been the executive secretary and ceo of frcn and of course if you have been with us he's been sharing his thoughts on his vision on the transformation agenda and on how frcn will be playing the the the, the, the the regulatory role it is meant to play, especially in this transformation uh, era. So please follow us with us as we continue on this show uh, while we continue to take questions. Of course, but for now, we we'll may quickly take some announcements and we'll continue with the show uh, when, when, when the guest is back on the show. So let me quickly take some announcements here. Come Saturday, December 16, 2023, of course, that will be the 22nd Fellowship Confirmment Ceremony. And that will be taking place at Landmark Event Center, Victoria Island, Lagos, starting 11 a.m. The amount for that confirmant is 160,000 Naira. So members that are due for FCA confirmant, go ahead and apply. And of course, be ready for the FCA confirmant. The next one is by 
December 4 and 5, 2023, because we'll be having the 72nd induction ceremony. Those that are coming newly into the institute. By now, I understand that registration has closed. For those who have registered, who have applied, because we'll be having that celebration, 72nd induction ceremony at Icon Center in Amu Ward, Dauphin, between December 4 and 5th. Please do not forget. Also, we have the EMC PD, PD training for managing to this workforce for the future. EMC PD training, managing to this workforce for the future. Date, November 29 to 30th, because it is a physical engagement and the fee is 100,000 Naira. Also, we have the faculties training program. The faculties training program uh, is also coming up between November 27th and December 1st. It is an hybrid program, a combination of uh, physical and virtual. The cost is just 15,000 Naira. Please make every effort to be part of this program. Also, we have the uh, faculties training program, the financial model certification training, which is also coming up, of course, uh, November 27th to December 4th. It is a virtual program, and the cost is 100,000 Naira. Also, all ICANN members and friends of the Institute are enjoined to subscribe to ICANN YouTube channel and to follow all ICANN social media handles. Please follow us on ICANN Facebook, follow us on the Instagram handle, and also on LinkedIn. On LinkedIn, please, it is essential. You are totally part of the institute where you belong. And of course, the Icon Event Center located at Plot 12, Kofo Kasimo Street, Lakeview Estate, Phase 1, Amuad of in Lagos, is available for rentage. So please, all members should know the facilities is fully air conditioned, affordable prices with up to 15% discount. It is located at a serene environment, uninterrupted power supply, there is maximum security, and its capacity is up to 4,000 people. So hurry up, and of course, uh, dial in the numbers, and of course, as a member, these are one of the benefits you can also uh, get as a member of the Institute. So let us not forget this announcement Sorry, I understand the ES are uh, struggling with internet issues. Of course, we are all aware how the internet could be on this part of the world. It is something that no one has control over. But of course, as soon as it's back on the show, uh, we'll, as time permits us, we'll take a few more questions before the show will be over. I can see questions flowing in, flowing in, flowing in. Questions from an ex staff. What he says, I'm an ex staff of FRCN. I understand. So there are questions on the line for our guests on the show. So let's quickly go and take a short break and we'll be right back. Please don't go away. We'll be right back. As a finance professional in a disrupted business landscape, what does it take to be in demand? What does it take to attract great paying international roles? If you're an ICANN member, it'll just take one exam. That's all it takes to complete the globally recognized SEMA professional qualification and the internationally in respected CGMA designation. As a SEMA member and a CGMA designation holder, employers will look at you as a finance professional, constantly acquiring new skills to add value to the business. That's why they'll be willing to pay premium to hire and retain you. If you have five years of relevant experience and are an ICANN member, you can directly sit for the final exam of the SEMA Professional Qualification, the Strategic Case Study Exam. Start studying the SEMA Professional Qualification. Prepare to make an impact. Security is key to national development and growth. No nation can be truly economically successful without peace and stability or when its security is threatened. This is why we must perform our civic obligation of duly paying our taxes so as to provide the needed resources for government to secure our lives and properties. 
when we pay our taxes, government is provided with the needed resources to equip our security agencies for a safer Nigeria. The money we pay as taxes is used to purchase equipment and hardware, invest in intelligence and other sophisticated technology, as well as cater for the welfare of all security personnel. A secure nation is a prosperous nation. Nigeria is safer when we pay our taxes. FIRS, it pays to pay your tax. As a finance professional in a disrupted business landscape, what does it take to be in demand? What does it take to attract great paying international roles? If you're an ICANN member, it'll just take one exam. That's all it takes to complete the globally recognized SEMA professional qualification and the internationally in respected CGMA designation. As a SEMA member and a CGMA designation holder, employers will look at you as a finance professional, constantly acquiring new skills to add value to the business. That's why they'll be willing to pay premium to hire and retain you. If you have five years of relevant experience and are an ICANN member, you can directly sit for the final exam of the SEMA professional qualification, the strategic case study exam. Start studying the SEMA professional qualification. Prepare to make an impact. Yes, you welcome back to ICANN on Air, and today we are discussing the topic transformation agenda of the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria. And no thanks to the uh, poor internet connection and the glitch we had with our guest on the show today. But of course, if you have joined us since the inception of the program, you would have listened to most of the responses he has been given. They are apt. They are apt. And of course, uh, no thanks once again, once again to the glitch. Uh, my ears... <laughs> You're welcome back. Sorry about that, sir. Oh, thank you very much. I had to change my internet source. Yeah, but uh, thank you very much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay, so uh, still on our questions, uh, of course, we have questions from the audience, and uh, I think we can pick one or two again from them uh, before we close the show for today because of our time. I know with you, we can continue to move on and move on because you are there. You're a professor, and you're a scholar, and you're ready for us today being the executive secretary. Let's take a question from Kingsley Sunday, Oyekezie. So please, why is it that your council will insist that a professional accountant will have to register separately for an assurance as also as DFA for someone who performed these roles instead of a single registration? Let me take it again, sir. So why is it that your council will insist that a professional accountant will have to register separately for as assurance and also as DFA for someone who performed this role instead of a single registration. Yeah, so thank you very much. I think these are very uh, uh, practical issues that uh, we continue, you know, that continue to come to our attention. Uh, in my sense, I believe that there has to be a syndication, uh, or, you know, of registration uh, on a person. Uh, so I believe that in this kind of instance, uh, that there should be a syndication. So those kind of issues to, you know, should be, you know, brought to our attention, and uh, we we'll also try to envelop these from a policy standpoint and uh, make them, uh, you know, public. But I believe okay. that uh, a single registration uh, will be the most. Uh, appropriate so we'll look into this as uh, you know as soon as possible okay that, that, that's a good one sir thank you for for that response uh my ears uh, from a grapevine we understand that uh, uh as part of the transformation agenda possibly uh the membership subscription of firms and professionals uh to frcn would be would likely be increased uh considering the harsh economic conditions uh, we are currently witnessing in the country. Uh, how do you react to that, sir? So, what is the source of, of your grapevine? Uh, if I may, I, I mean, am I allowed to ask the the host question? <laughs> what is the source of your grapevine? <laughs> but uh, to answer the question, um, 
I don't know the source of your great, you know, grapevine, but we will always try to do the right thing. Uh, we understand that the, you know, there's economic hardship. We also understand that there's inflation as well. Things have moved, you know, in terms of um, bringing these uh, responsibilities of firms and of also professional accountants near to current realities. There might be need for those kind of changes. But what I'm going to say is that whatever we do will be very, very reasonable, will be very, very fair, and it will address... Uh, the current, you know, uh, you know, take into cognizance or consideration the current economic climate, and it will not, uh, you know, create untoward hardship to anyone. Okay, we we'll appreciate that. Thank you very much. Uh, as we try to wrap up, uh, we understand that on the 29th of this month, November, uh, FRCN will be holding a media party themed FRC and the renewed hope agenda for a stronger economy. Uh, what should Nigerians expect from this media party? So thank you. I mean, you know, it gives uh, an opportunity for us to showcase our transformation agenda on a deeper level. What exactly is our promise? What exactly, uh, uh, you know, our strategies? What do we want to do? But most importantly, this media party is not just a media party. It's also bringing together our stakeholder groups. From financial institution to preparers of financial statement to prepare, you know, to uh, those who uh, um, whose job is to provide assurance, consulting firms, auditing firms, bringing this stakeholder group together uh, for us to take feedback from them, uh, you know, in terms of what are those things that um, they want us to do better, uh, and also giving us an opportunity to also communicate in detail uh, our transformation so that we can get input. The transformation agenda is open, uh, is currently uh, being articulated. Uh, so that particular occasion is going to give us an opportunity for our stakeholders to make very useful input, you know, as we wrap these things up and so that it becomes a vision board for us. So we want to, uh, uh, you know, encourage institutions like ICANN and specifically the media team of ICANN, ICANN on air, and uh, you know, preparers of financial statement, those who provide assurance, uh, financial institution, you know, different industry and subsector to be represented. Where you know, we we're inviting other regulators as well. Those whom that we hope that you know, going forward, we we'll continue to work with the CAC, the SEC. Everyone is going to be there. So if you have time, you should meet us uh, at the Oriental Hotel from eleven o'clock to one o'clock next week, Wednesday. Okay, thank you for the invitation to extend it to ICANN on air. And I'm starting that with the approval of my chairman who would be there. Thank you so much. And in closing, ICANN as a professional institute is always open to ideas that would positively advance the growth of our members, the accountancy profession, and the Nigerian business environment at large. In what ways can ICANN and our members key in and effectively contribute in the transformation agenda of the Financial Reporting Council of Nigeria under your watch. Yeah, thank you very much. A big part of what we do evolves around accountants. And uh, yeah, for those who know the history of the Financial Reporting Council, uh, it was bettered uh, uh, sometimes in uh, 1982, uh, uh, you know, as the Nigerian Accounting Standard Board. It was a private sector initiative uh, that was peer-headed, controlled, and managed by ICANN. Uh, 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 you know, until the government took took it over and subsequently metamorphosed uh, uh, into the Financial Reporting Council. So uh, ICANN has been playing a huge role. ICANN is currently represented in our board. Uh, you know, uh, those who uh, uh, provide assurance, preparers of finance, they are essentially ICANN and ANAN members. So we'll continue to look up to them uh, to continue to provide that sterling activities, that sterling contribution to the profession to make sure that their inputs, their activity are credible, are professional. Those, you know, those that are expected of a professional accountant so that the credibility of a financial report and financial statement can be uh, you know, at first class. So uh, we just want all professional accountants to abide by the rules of the profession, the values of the profession. It will help us in our oversight of our activities uh, contributing to financial reporting and also 
the corporate governance. And we believe that if the accountants uh, do their job well, businesses will grow, credibility of uh, you know financial statement, you know, will 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 also grow. And at the end of the day, it will attract foreign direct investment, our economy will, will you know will succeed, create jobs, you know, it has all those chain effects. So that's exactly what we expect from our professional accountants, and uh, we hope that they'll continue to deliver those uh, values. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Rabi Olowo, the Secretary of FRC. And uh, we want to say thank you so much uh, for being on the show today. I know uh, if we we'll have much time, you will continue to take more questions on the show. But because of uh, no more time on the show, we want to say thank you at this junction. I will say thank you so much for coming. And we also hope that when next we call upon you, you will hack into our call. Thank you so much, sir. Absolutely. It's been a very, very, you know, interesting and engaging uh, time on the show. And thank you for giving us the opportunity, this platform to air. Thank you very thank much. You very much. Us. My original colleagues and our global viewers, you agree with me that today's program is worth the while, highly educating and instructive. And that's the show for today. I want to thank you for being part of this show. So they come your way again with another guest, another topical issue. Please stay safe and sound. And on behalf of the editorial team and the producers of Icon on Air, I remain to see Akimumi saying thank you for watching and bye for now.